Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hello, this is Pastor Spencer Messiah Lutheran Church. Tonight's devotion for this Tuesday, the 9th of June, is from the second half of the 74th Psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yet God my King is from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. You crushed the head of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. You split open springs and brooks. You dried up ever-flowing streams. Yours is the day, yours is also the night. You have established the heavenly lights and the sun. You have fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, O Lord, how the enemy scoffs. And the foolish people reviles your name. Do not deliver the souls of your dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the lives of your poor forever. Have regard for the covenant. For the dark places of the lands are full of the habitations of violence. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Let the poor and the needy praise your name. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Remember how the foolish scoff at you all the day. Do not forget the clamor of your foes, the uproar of those who rise against you, which goes up continually. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, our covenant God, you have promised us the cleansing from sin in the blood of the Lamb, and have obligated yourself to be a merciful Father to us. Grant us the spirit of faith that we may trust the word of your covenant and not doubt your faithfulness through Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. And tonight we continue with our study of Romans chapter 3. And tonight we will be looking at verse 8. And we'll start with verse 7. God's truthfulness, uh, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases His glory, why am I condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and in some claim that we say, let us do evil, that good may result? their condemnation is deserved. So we get back to this idea that our unrighteousness, our evil, our wickedness, makes the righteousness of God appear all the brighter. Now think about this for a moment. If we live in a world that rejoices in doing what is wicked and has become darker and darker in their actions and in their manners, and if we say this is the truth, this is what purity looks like, and we point out the light of Christ to people, would it not appear all the brighter? There are those that would rather continue to do their deeds in darkness and not have the light shined upon them. There are those out there that would rather have their lifestyles be not condemned but condoned. 
They would rather have people say, well, it's a choice and therefore I have chosen this way and you can't tell me to do any differently. But you see, it's not us telling them what to do. It is the Word of God. The Word of God which is incorruptible and infallible and immutable. The Word of God which says, this is what is absolute. But you see, the world doesn't want absolutes. The world wants to have the freedom to do whatever they want, to live where whichever way they want, and die whichever way they want, without ever knowing the consequences, thinking that in their ignorance, they will never feel the pangs of death, the pangs of sin. But God's Word's very clear about it. It still stands on the tablets of their heart. God still is speaking through the Holy Spirit to them. The Ten Commandments are not just items chiseled out in stone, they are in flesh and blood as well. Cultures all through the world have an understanding of what is right and that there is a wrong. The world has been trying to change what is right into wrong and what is wrong into right. But God's Word is still very clear about it. And we are still called to stand on God's Word. And by standing on that Word, even though sometimes it seems like the world looks at us and calls us dangerous, or calls us naive, or calls us backwards. I'd rather stand before the Lord God Almighty who has the ability to announce where I go forever than to listen to those people that would have me follow the false way today. For in the knowledge of following the Holy One comes peace. A peace that passes all understanding, a peace that exists inside of a world that's turned over and upside down in turmoil. Yes, God is with us. He is present. And He's present tonight in His Word. Showing us that His Son went to the cross for all those things He condemns, knowing that we couldn't keep it right, but He did for us. That our hope is in Jesus Christ and in His blood and righteousness. No merit of our own, no works of our own, but the work of a loving God through His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. And where Jesus is, there is peace. He promises. Have a peaceful evening and a blessed night's sleep. God's blessings.